Mari kita sama-sama sekarang membuka uh, John chapter 7. Let us open our Bibles to John chapter 7. Kita akan melihat ayat yang pertama sampai ayat yang ke-24. We will look at verses 1 to 24. John chapter 7 ayat yang pertama sampai 24. John chapter 7 verses 1 to 24. Kalau sudah dapat saya bacakan untuk kita sekalian. And uh, once you've turned here I'll read this for you. After this Jesus went about in Galilee. He would not go about in Judea because the Jews were seeking to kill him. Now the Jews feast of booth was at hand. So his brothers said to him, "Leave here and go to Judea." that your disciples also may see the works you are doing. For no one works in secret if he seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For not even his brothers believed in him. Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always here. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify about it that its works are evil. You go up to the feast. I'm not going up to, the, to, to this feast for my time has not yet fully come. After saying this, he remained in Galilee. But after his brothers had gone up to the feast, then he also went up, not publicly, but in private. The Jews were looking for him at the feast and saying, where is he? And there was much muttering about him among the people, while some said he is a good man, others said, no, he is leading the people astray. Yet for fear of the Jews, no one spoke openly of him. About the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and began teaching. The Jews therefore marveled, saying, How is it that this man has learning when he has never studied? So Jesus answered them, My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. If, anyone is, if anyone's will is, is to do God's will, he will know whether the teaching is from God or whether I am speaking on my own authority. The one who speaks on his own authority seeks his own glory. But the one who seeks the glory of him who sent him is true, and in him there is no falsehood. Has not Moses given you the law? Yet none of you keeps the law. Why do you seek to kill me? The crowd answered, You have a demon. Who is seeking to kill you? Jesus answered them, I did one work, and you all marvel at it. Moses gave you circumcision, not that it is from Moses, but from the fathers, and you circumcise a man on the Sabbath. If on the Sabbath a man receives circumcision so that the law of Moses may not be broken, are you angry with me? Because on the Sabbath I made a man's whole body well. Do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. This is the word of the Lord. Let us bow our heads and pray. Father in heaven, we are so grateful that you have given us the privilege to read your holy word and we pray that as we would meditate these words upon our lives we would find ourselves blessed and our mind opened and our hearts um, enlightened lord father we long to see your son more clearly we long to see we long to hear your voice more clearly and we long to grow in our love to you more dearly Please hear our pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We pray, Amen. Sudah sekali kita sudah sampai di dalam John chapter yang ketujuh. Our brothers and sisters, we have arrived in John chapter seven. Di dalam John chapter yang keenam kita melihat Tuhan Yesus dikelilingi oleh orang banyak yang mengikuti Dia dan sampai akhirnya mereka meninggalkan Dia. In John chapter seven, we see that many people have gathered around Christ, but then they leave Christ. Di dalam John chapter yang ke-7 kita akan mendiskusikan ayat pertama sampai ayat yang ke-24 di dalam uh, satu pertanyaan besar ini. In John chapter 7 verses 1 to 24 we will discuss this passage based off one question. Yaitu bagaimana caranya untuk kita boleh menyaring orang supaya orang yang tepat itu boleh datang kepada Tuhan Yesus. How can we sift through people so that the right type of people come to Christ? Atau put differently, bagaimana caranya kita bisa mempresent, mempresentasikan the real Jesus supaya akhirnya orang betul-betul punya iman yang sejati di dalam Tuhan Yesus? 
Or to put it differently, how can we present the real Jesus so that people have true faith in Christ? Di dalam sejarah ada beberapa proposal yang coba diajukan untuk menjawab pertanyaan-pertanyaan seperti ini. In history there were uh, two different models that arose to answer these sorts of questions. Di dalam abad yang ke-20 itu ada satu movement yang bernama Jesus Seminar. In the 20th century there was a movement called the Jesus Seminar. Nah, Jesus Seminar itu berusaha untuk untuk benar-benar mereka bisa menemukan the real and historical Jesus. The Jesus Seminar really tried so that people could discover the true and historical Jesus. Jadi mereka mengabaikan semua catatan Injil tentang Tuhan Yesus dan mereka pikir they, they can go beyond the record of the gospel untuk menemukan who is the real Jesus. So they looked at the words of the Bible but then they felt that they could go beyond this in order to discover who the real Jesus is. Sehingga akhirnya mereka berusaha untuk mengkategorikan every sentences that Jesus said in four groups. So in the end they categorized Jesus's words in four different groups. Jadi mereka mengkategorikan kalimat Tuhan Yesus di dalam empat bagian seperti ini. So they categorized Jesus's words in these different categories. Ada kalimat-kalimat Tuhan Yesus yang ketika mereka teliti, mereka mengatakan, "Oh, this is very unlikely Jesus said this kind of sentence." Um, there were sentences that Jesus said that they thought, "Oh, it's pretty unlikely that Jesus said this." Jadi kalimat seperti before Abraham was I am. Uh, ini kayaknya bukan kalimat Tuhan Yesus lah. So sentences like before Abraham was I am. Oh, it's pretty unlikely that Jesus said this. Lalu mereka kasih warna black untuk kalimat itu. And they color coded this in black. Very unlikely diucapkan oleh Tuhan Yesus. It's very unlikely that Jesus spoke these words. Lalu mereka menggunakan kode warna yang lain yaitu adalah gray. They used another color code that is gray. Uh, somewhat unlikely. Uh, somewhat unlikely. Jadi misalnya apa? Contoh seperti misalnya, uh, right? Your sins are forgiven. Uh, so example such as Jesus saying, your sins are forgiven. Apa ya orang Yahudi mengucapkan kalimat itu to the fellow Jews? Oh, well, what Jewish person would say these words to another Jew? Lalu yang pink. Itu adalah kalimat-kalimat yang mereka pikir, hmm, this is somewhat likely Tuhan Yesus akan mengatakannya. And pink were the words that they felt hmm, it is somewhat likely that Jesus said these words. Tapi mereka sampai kepada level yang terakhir, yaitu yang betul-betul mereka percaya this is very authentic. Ini adalah kalimat yang authentically keluar dari mulut Tuhan Yesus. Then there was the final level, the one at which they felt these are truly likely to be authentic words of Christ. Uh, definitely kayak doa Bapa kami misalnya. Uh, definitely like the Lord's Prayer. Lalu juga perintah untuk saling mengasihi. And the commandment to love one another. Dan mereka menggunakan warna merah untuk menandai, oh this is the authentic sentences of Jesus Christ. And they use the color red to highlight that these are the authentic words of Jesus Christ. Nah, tapi masalahnya ketika mereka akhirnya menggunakan kategori seperti itu, pertanyaan adalah mereka pakai kacamata apa untuk shift all the sentences of Jesus? But the problem is when they have used these categories, you have to ask the question, what lenses are they using in order to sift through the words of Christ? At the end of the day, itu adalah asumsi mereka atau world view mereka yang menentukan what kind of Jesus they have. At the end of the day, it is what world view they have that determines the kind of Jesus that they have. Itu world view dari 20th century modern people. That is the world view of the 20th century modern person. At the end mereka cuma menemukan Tuhan Yesus yang adalah a moral teacher. And then they discovered a Christ who is just a moral teacher. Yang perfectly fit with their uh, 20th century world view. Yang cocok dengan world view abad ke-20 mereka. They suited the 20th century world view. Uh, saya pernah baca itulah salah satu alasan kenapa akhirnya di dalam kitab suci sebagian kita itu semua perkataan Tuhan Yesus ditulis dengan warna merah. Karena kita sebagai evangelical, sebagai protestan, we want to state that yes, all the words of Jesus are authentic. That's why they are put in red. Because as evangelicals and protestants, we want to be able to say yes, all the words of Jesus are authentic. So uh, proposal yang pertama ya kita mentawarkan Tuhan Yesus secara scientific, secara historical, uh, modern historical research. So uh, the first thing we can do is offer the Jesus that we have from a scientific historical perspective. 
Dan mereka percaya dengan cara ini orang bisa berjumpa dengan the real Jesus. And these people that believe, these people believe that in this way people can meet the true Jesus. Cara yang lain yang pernah juga ditawarkan The second method that they offered in the past adalah melihat Tuhan Yesus dari perspektif kitab suci yang lain. Is seeing Jesus from the perspective of a different um, Ya kita bisa book. melihat misalnya kayak orang Islam mereka berusaha untuk mengerti Tuhan Yesus from Uh, dari sumber yang berusia 600 tahun setelah Tuhan Yesus datang. For example, we can see that the, in Islam they try to understand Jesus through the lenses of a book that was written 600 years after Jesus lived. So this is the real Jesus. Like, please, if you want to know who Jesus is, just go and read the Quran or the Hadith. Jadi kalau orang mau tahu tentang siapakah Tuhan Yesus, ya bacalah Quran gitu. Belajarlah kepada kami. So if they want to know who Jesus is, come read the Quran. Uh, again, saya pernah satu kali uh, share di sini ya. Ketika saya masih di Australia, saya itu pernah jalan di salah satu suburb di sana di dekat sebuah train station. Again, I've shared before when I was in Australia, I was walking in a suburb near a train station. Lalu ada banyak orang-orang dari uh, masjid di dekat situ yang mereka I don't know, like bagi-bagi traktat gitu. There were many people from a mosque uh, who were handing out uh, like tracks. And mereka offer untuk mereka boleh menjawab semua pertanyaan yang orang mau tahu tentang who Jesus is. They offered up um, that they would answer questions that people had about Jesus Christ. Dan mereka pakai kaos yang tulisannya di belakang mengatakan uh, we love Jesus. Uh, and they had t-shirts that on the back said we love Jesus. Jadi gimana kita ini bisa tahu uh, who Bagaimana caranya mempresentasikan Tuhan Yesus yang sesungguhnya? So how can we know how to present the true Jesus? Melalui kacamata modern historical research. Through the lens of modern historical research. Yang sudah diwarnai dengan modern assumption. That has been colored by modern assumptions. Atau melalui lensa misalnya agama lain, misalnya Islam atau uh, Hindu mysticism. Or through the lens of other religions such as Islam or Hindu mysticism. Atau yang ketiga adalah kita berusaha untuk mengerti siapakah Tuhan Yesus yang sesungguhnya from uh, pretty much apa yang menjadi pengharapan orang-orang uh, Jewish people yang kita baca di dalam John chapter 6. Or the third, we try to understand who the true Jesus is through the eyes of the Jewish people uh, who hoped in him in Chapter 6 John. Dan saya percaya juga merupakan satu hal yang seringkali terjadi di dalam kehidupan kita atau kehidupan orang-orang yang kita tahu. I believe this is something that often happens in our lives or in the lives of people who we know. If you want to know the real Jesus, kalau engkau ingin tahu Tuhan Yesus sesungguhnya, then uh, you ha, engkau harus ini ya. Engkau harus memposisikan Tuhan Yesus sebagai the bread maker. If you want to know the true Jesus, You have to position Jesus as the bread maker. Kasih bread, wealth and everything. That is a giver of bread, wealth and everything. Like do something miraculous to that benefits us. Uh, do some- Kerjakan sesuatu yang ajaib untuk bisa feed my need today. Do John s- chapter 6. Do something miraculous that will feed my needs today. That is John chapter 6. Saya hari ini ingin kita sama-sama merenungkan ini ya, pertanyaan bagaimana kita bisa menyaring orang supaya mereka bisa datang kepada Tuhan Yesus secara tepat. So I want to ask to answer this one question. How do we sift uh, through uh, the people so that the right type of people come to Jesus? Bagaimana kita bisa mempresentasikan the real Jesus to people supaya mereka tidak salah mengerti? How can we present the real Jesus to people so that they do not misunderstand? Ayat yang pertama sampai ke-24 itu menawarkan dua jawaban. Verses 1 to 24 offer up a new solution. Ayat pertama sampai ke-13 itu akan bicara bahwa salah satu matrix untuk kita pakai menawarkan Tuhan Yesus adalah through the cross. Verses 1 to 13 says that one of the matrices by which we offer Christ is the cross. Lalu yang kedua ayat 14 sampai ke-24 adalah through the authoritative word of God. And secondly From verses 14 to 24, that is through the authoritative word of God. Mari kita coba sama-sama lihat ayat yang pertama sampai ke-13. Let us look at verses 1 to 13. Saudara, kalau saudara perhatikan di sana, If you pay attention, Tuhan Yesus itu sedang uh, ada di Galilea. Uh, Jesus Christ is in Galilee. Lalu dalam ayat yang pertama dikatakan Tuhan Yesus dia tidak ada rencana untuk pergi ke Judea karena orang-orang Yahudi sedang mau membunuh Tuhan Yesus. And it is said that Jesus had no plans 
to go to Judea because the Jews were seeking to kill him. Kenapa perlu dicatat bahwa Tuhan Yesus hari itu dia menahan diri untuk tidak pergi ke Judea? Why was it necessary to write down that that day Jesus planned to not go to Judea? Karena di dalam ayat yang kedua dikatakan di sana bahwa hari itu merupakan satu periode di mana orang Yahudi sedang merayakan uh, feast of booths. Because at first too it is said the Jews feast of booths was at hand. Atau what is Indonesia? Uh, pondok pondok daun is it? Hari raya pondok daun. Semua pakai bahasa Inggris ya. It's difficult to find an equivalent in Indonesian. What does the Indonesian Bible say? Pondok daun. Okay, okay. Hari raya pondok daun. Okay, yeah. Nah, uh, hari raya pondok daun atau the feast of booths. Orang juga bisa mengatakan the feast of tabernacles atau sukkos in uh, Hebrew. The feast of booths is also known as the feast of tabernacles or of sukkos in Hebrew. Ini merupakan satu perayaan yang bersama dengan Passover and dan juga Pentecost. Tiga perayaan wajib yang harus dihadiri oleh every male Jewish. Uh, this is a celebration that together with the Passover and the Pentecost are the three celebrations that every male Jew must attend. Dan mereka mesti attend itu di Jerusalem. And they must attend it in Jerusalem. Nah, apa yang dirayakan di dalam uh, Sukkot atau Tabernacles atau Booth ini? So, what is being celebrated in this feast of uh, the booths or Tabernacle or Sukkot? Mereka merayakan terutama perjalanan 40 tahun nenek moyang mereka di padang gurun yang menerima begitu banyak provision dari Tuhan. Firstly, they celebrate the 40 years of wilderness wandering in which they received so many provisions from God. Jadi dari dulu sampai hari ini, maka orang-orang Yahudi yang merayakan Festival of Tabernacles atau Sukkot, mereka akan membuat uh, kayak hut gitu ya, kayak semacam pondok yang terbuat dari daun dan mereka tinggal di sana selama 7 sampai 8 hari. So from then and until now, people who celebrate the feast of the booths, they will build temporary shelters from leaves and live in it for eight days. Untuk memperingati dulu nenek moyang mereka harus tinggal di tempat yang kira-kira seperti itu ketika berjalan di padang gurun. To remind themselves that their ancestors had to live in these types of houses as they were going through the wilderness. Jadi ini Saudara bayangkan ya, kalau saya adalah seorang Jewish male dan saudara pergi ke Yerusalem, yang saudara lihat di Yerusalem itu adalah kayak ribuan lautan pondok-pondok daun yang dibuat orang di kiri kan kanan jalan. So imagine if you were a Jewish male and you came to Jerusalem, there are just a whole sea of little leaf huts that were being set up. Dan itu very joyous. And it's a very joyous occasion. Di dalam perayaan Sukot maka juga ada satu ritual di mana orang itu berkeliling di sekitar the temple of God sambil mereka membawa torch. And at the celebration of Sukkot there is also a celebration where people bring their torches to surround the temple. Itulah kenapa nanti kalau kita lihat misalnya di dalam chapter yang ke-8 Tuhan Yesus mengatakan I am the light of the world. And that is why we see in chapter 8 Jesus says I am the light of the world. Like he is the true essence of the feast of tabernacle. Dia adalah esensi dari seluruh perayaan tabernakel, perayaan pondok daun itu. He's a true essence of the feast of the tabernacle. Nah, di dalam perayaan Sukot itu juga ada satu ritual di mana priest itu akan mengambil air dari uh, kolam Siloam. Uh, during Sukot, the priest also draws water from the pool of Siloam. Dan akan dibawa ke bait Allah dan air dari kolam Siloam itu akan dituangkan kepada uh, tempayan. And he carries it to the temple and this water from the pool of Siloam is poured out into a silver basin beside the altar. Itu like, nanti kalau kita lihat dalam chapter 7 Tuhan Yesus akan mengatakan apa? Like I'm the living water gitu. Aku akan memberikan air hidup. In chapter 7 we see then that Jesus says that I am the living water. Tapi anyway saudara, right? jadi feast of booths atau feast of tabernacles ini merupakan satu perayaan yang sangat besar. So the feast of tabernacles is a <coughs> big celebration. Sehingga kalau saudara lihat dalam ayat yang ketiga, para saudara-saudara Tuhan Yesus itu berkata kepada dia, just go to Judea. In, in verse 3, we even see the brothers of Jesus says to him, just go to Judea. Saya bacakan ya, ayat ketiga sampai keempat. I'll read to you verses 3 and 4. Live here and go to Judea, that your disciples also may see the works you are doing. For no one works in secret if he seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. Berangkatlah dari sini dan pergi ke Yudea supaya murid-muridmu juga melihat perbuatan-perbuatan yang engkau lakukan 
Sebab tidak seorang pun berbuat sesuatu di tempat tersembunyi jika ia mau diakui di muka umum. Jika engkau berbuat hal-hal yang demikian, tampakkanlah dirimu kepada dunia. Tuhan Yesus itu dia baru saja kehilangan banyak murid di dalam John chapter 6. Jesus had just lost many disciples in chapter 6. Tapi at the same time dia juga sudah mulai dinominat sebagai the next king of Israel yang bisa memerdekakan Israel from Romans. But at the same time he was nominated as the next Hebrew king who could free the Jewish people from their oppressions, oppresses the Rome, Romans. Jadi saudara Tuhan Yesus itu berpikir itu kehilangan disciples dalam jumlah sebesar itu it's not final. So the brothers of Jesus thought losing so many disciples this is not final. Karena masih ada the feast of tabernacles just go to Judea and just make miraculous works. Because there is still the feast of tabernacles so go to Judea and make your works known. Uh, kalau saudara tahu istilah carpe diem. If you know the phrase carpe diem. Seize the day. Seize the day. Inilah kesempatan untuk kamu mengumpulkan banyak orang and become king. This is an opportunity for you to gather many people and become king. Menjadi popular dan mengumpulkan masa dan membuat dirimu menjadi seorang raja. For you to be popular oh. and to have uh, fans and to become king. Caranya bagaimana? How, what, how would you do this? Well, setelah engkau ke Judea, maka ayat yang ketiga mengatakan, uh, do the works. Well, after you go to Judea, verse 3 says, do the works. What kind of works yang dimaksud di sini? What kind of works are meant here? Like certainly, sudah kalau sudah lihat konteks, ini merupakan tanda-tanda ajaib yang Tuhan Yesus itu kerjakan. Certainly, if you look at the context, this is talking about the miraculous works that Jesus is doing. Do the miracles work? Itu persis di tengah-tengah feast of tabernacle, and you will gain a lot of disciples and followers. Pergilah ke feast of tabernacle, lalu buatlah tanda yang sedemikian banyak, dan kau akan mendapatkan begitu banyak pengikut. Go to the feast of the tabernacles, do these miraculous works and you will gain lots of followers. Saudara, certainly ya, kalau kita lihat dalam John's Gospel, itu yang namanya miraculous signs, itu has its has their own place. Certainly if we look in the Gospel of John, miraculous signs have their place. Apalagi di dalam klaim Tuhan Yesus bahwa dia adalah God incarnate, ya, the Logos that becomes flesh. Especially in Jesus' role as God incarnate, the Word of God, the Logos, become free, then flesh. Then do things that only God can do. Dan kerjakanlah hal-hal yang bisa Tuhan itu kerjakan. Do things that only God can do. Nah kalau sudah lihat di dalam perjanjian lama, maka salah satu feature bahwa ini adalah Allah sejati adalah melalui penciptaan, ya, creation out of nothing, itu adalah feature from the real God. If you look in the Old Testament, one of the features of a true God is creation from ex nihilo, creation out of nothing. Sehingga ketika Tuhan Yesus di dalam Injil Yohanes dia berkali-kali membuat tanda, itu menunjukkan bahwa He has the capacity to do, to create things out of nothing. So when Jesus does these many different signs in John, He is proving that He is able to create out of nothing. Certainly, sorry, yang namanya miracle signs itu has its value. So yes, miraculous signs have their value. Apalagi kalau saudara juga melihat sebetulnya di dalam Injil Yohanes itu bicara tentang apa? Bicara tentang pencipta yang datang kepada ciptaannya. Especially if you see in the book of John there is the creator who comes down to his creation. Jadi physical physical signs yang orang itu bisa lihat itu has its own roles in John's gospel. So physical signs that people can see have its role in John's gospel. Having said that, sudah, setelah saya bicara seperti ini, kita mesti mengingat apa yang dikatakan oleh Injil Yohanes misalnya di dalam uh, pasal yang ke-20. Having said that, we have to remember what the Gospel of John says such as in chapter 20. Jadi di akhir pasal ke-20 itu Rasul Yohanes mengatakan kalimat seperti ini. In chapter 20, the apostle John says this. Kalau semua perbuatan yang dikerjakan oleh Tuhan Yesus itu ditulis, maka tidak akan cukup langit ini untuk memuatnya. If all of the signs Jesus did were written down, there would not be enough books in this world to contain them. Makanya hanya dipilih tujuh. And so he only chose seven signs. Nah, saya pikir ya dari sekian banyak hal yang dikerjakan oleh Tuhan Yesus, maka Injil Yohanes hanya pilih beberapa saja. So see, out of all the signs that Jesus performed, John only wrote down seven. Dan kalau sudah baca Injil Yohanes, maka sudah akan menemukan Injil Yohanes itu lebih banyak memuat omongan Tuhan Yesus, perkataan Tuhan Yesus. And if you look at the Gospel of John, John 
has emphasis on writing down more of the sayings of Christ. Jadi pertanyaannya adalah like kenapa kalau kita lihat sama-sama di dalam bagian ini Tuhan Yesus dia tidak membuat signs during the feast of tabernacles. So the question we have to ask is why did Jesus not perform signs during the feast of the tabernacle? Kenapa di dalam pasal yang ke-7 dan ke-8 dia lebih banyak bicara dan mengajar? Why did he do more speaking and teaching in chapters 7 and 8? Ada beberapa ini Isra, ada beberapa alasan yang kita bisa pikirkan. There are several answers that we might have. Yang pertama, the first. Yang namanya signs itu akan confined in time and history. Signs are confined in time and history. Signs itu akan dibatasi oleh ruang dan waktu dalam sejarah. Signs signs are confined by time and history. Satu kali miraculous signs itu dibuat maka itu akan lewat di dalam waktu. Once this miraculous sign has been conducted, it will pass away with time. Makanya kalau sudah lihat pasal yang kelima, ada orang lumpuh disembuhkan, maka sekali Tuhan Yesus menyembuhkan dia, that's it, that's it gitu. Dia tidak akan disembuhkan kedua kalinya karena apalagi mau disembuhkan gitu. Such as we see in chapter 5, the man who was lame was healed, but that's a one-off event. He's not going to be healed again. There's nothing else left to heal. Perlu witness untuk mengkonfirmasi apakah kejadian itu benar. We need eyewitnesses to confirm whether this really occurred. Demikian juga kalau Saudara nanti baca John chapter 9 tentang penyembuhan orang buta. In the same way if you look in John chapter 9 with the healing of the blind man. Begitu orang buta dicelikan, that's it, langsung sudah lewat peristiwa penyembuhan tersebut. When the blind man's eyes were opened, well that's it, that's the end of that miracle story. Sehingga orang-orang Yahudi mereka perlu eyewitnesses yang melihat kejadian tersebut. And the Jewish people needed eyewitnesses who witnessed to this event. Jadi, signs itu confined in time and history. So signs are confined in time and history. Dengan kata lain, signs itu inaccessible to some extent. In other words, signs are inaccessible to some extent. Hanya orang-orang tertentu yang mengalami dan hanya sedikit orang yang melihat. Only some people experience it and only some people witness it. Again, ya kita mesti mengingat ya dari sekian banyak tanda yang dikerjakan Tuhan Yesus, in Yohanes itu hanya sisakan tujuh. Again, we have to remember out of all the many signs Jesus performed, there were only seven accounted for in John. Dan lebih banyak merekam apa yang dikatakan Tuhan Yesus. And there are more record, record, records of what Jesus said. Hal yang kedua ya, selain sign itu confined in time and history, maka yang kedua adalah signs in itself, in themselves, itu tidak bisa mengubah hati orang. Secondly, other than signs being confined in time and history, signs in itself cannot change human hearts. Kalau signs bisa change human heart, then semua orang in John's gospel itu bisa jadi believers. If signs can change the human heart, then everyone in the book of John would have become a Christian. Kalau saudara lihat misalnya uh, John chapter 5 ya, setelah Tuhan Yesus menyembuhkan orang lumpuh, maka orang-orang Yahudi pikir, okay, we'll, we have to kill this man here. We look in John chapter 5 after Jesus healed the lame man the Jewish people were thinking we have to kill this man even setelah Lazarus itu bangkit dari kematian karena Tuhan Yesus membangkitkan dia orang Yahudi juga pikir that's it we have to kill this man even after Lazarus was raised from the dead the Jewish people were still thinking now we have to kill this man you have signs but not necessarily itu bisa merubah hati orang you have signs but this does not necessarily change people's hearts the ancestors in the wilderness itu mereka kurang apa lihat signs from God. The ancestors in the wilderness, what were they lacking in seeing signs from God? The, you know, the first generation they perished in the wilderness. Angkatan pertama orang Israel itu mereka mati di padang gurun. The first generation perished in the wilderness. Mungkin saya akan tanya ya, bagaimana dengan Thomas? Kita akan bicara Thomas nanti uh, agak sedikit di bawah. Uh, you might ask, uh, what about Thomas? And we'll talk more about him later on. Lalu yang ketiga, Thirdly, selain sign itu confined in time and history, jadi itu relatively inaccessible for everyone. Yang kedua, signs itu in it in themselves cannot change man's heart. Tapi yang ketiga, yang namanya signs itu bisa uh, variously interpreted. Uh, so, uh, thirdly, other than signs being confined in time and history and being relatively inaccessible to many people, secondly, that signs in itself cannot change the human hearts. Thirdly, signs can be interpreted in various ways. Jadi kalau sudah lihat ayat yang ke-20 misalnya ya. We look at verse 20 for example. The crowd answered, you have a demon who is seeking to kill you. 
Orang banyak itu menjawab, engkau kerasukan setan. Siapakah yang berusaha membunuh engkau? Lo kok jadi you have a demon gitu padahal he can make signs. Oh, well, like how is it that he's possessed by a demon after he's done these signs? Signs itu bisa variously interpreted. Signs can be interpreted in varying ways. Uh, satu kali waktu saya masih di Sydney ya, saya pergi ke sebuah kebaktian Natal dan uh, ada satu drama Natal di sana. Once when I was in Sydney, I attended a Christmas play. Um, this is a f- this is a healthy church. Ya? Ini, ini adalah gereja yang sehat. Lalu uh, di dalam drama itu di mainkan uh, skenario seperti ini. And in this drama there was this scenario. Ada keluarga Kristen yang pada waktu Natal mereka mengalami, mengalami banyak kesulitan. There was a Christian family during Christmas they experienced many difficulties. Uh, kesulitan finansial, kesulitan ekonomi, uh, kesulitan relasi dan seterusnya. A financial relational struggles. Uh, dan in short di dalam drama Natal itu akhirnya keluarga ini berdoa dan mereka mendapatkan pertolongan dari Tuhan. And short during this play this the family prayed they received help from God. Like certainly ad- ada poinnya sudah untuk Nah, saya saya sih saya, saya agak khawatir nanti sore bacanya ini ya jadi jadi kebalik ya. Oh, jadi kita enggak usah expect God's help. That's not my point. I don't want you to take this the wrong way. It's not it's not that you shouldn't expect God's help when you pray. That's not my point. Tapi masalahnya kalau drama Natalnya cuma seperti itu. The, but the problem is, is if that's the only point of the Christmas play, saya bisa ganti every time the name of Jesus itu disebut dalam drama itu, saya bisa ganti dengan nama yang lain. The drama itu will still works gitu. I can change the name of Jesus with another name and the drama would still be the same would still work. Ya, ini keluarga Kristen mereka berdoa kepada Tuhan Yesus dan mereka menerima pertolongan di dalam masalah finansial atau relasi mereka di dalam drama tersebut. Yes, the family prayed to God and they received financial help and so on and so forth. Tapi kalau saya ganti nama Tuhan Yesus dengan Krishna atau Vishnu atau Allah itu juga bisa make sense di dalam drama yang lain gitu di dalam ada perayaan Aduh, perayaan apa ya? Uh, di Pawali atau uh, Satu Muharram misalnya gitu. But, but if I change the name of Jesus with you know, Krishna or Vishnu or Allah, the uh, drama would still work here that they might play it at a Diwali festival, for example. Like science itu bisa multiply, uh, bisa punya begitu banyak variation di dalam uh, interpretation. Science can result in many variations in interpretation. Yes, jadi science it has its own value untuk confirm Christian faith. So science has its own value in confirming Christian faith. Akan tetapi science as in miraculous works itu not not necessarily satu hal yang menjadi essence from uh, true Christian faith. But miraculous works are not the essence of true Christian faith. Because we have a list of martyrs in history. Kita punya deretan orang-orang yang mati, and kalau mereka mati karena iman mereka, it means no miracles help. Because we have a long list of martyrs, because they died for their faith, we know that miracles did not help. Again, ya, mungkin saya akan tanya, ya, bagaimana dengan Thomas? Bukankah Thomas itu melihat Tuhan Yesus bangkit dan dia percaya? Again, you might ask about Thomas. Did Thomas not see Jesus resurrected from the dead and believe upon Jesus? I think di dalam hal ini, saudara, saya ada di dalam posisi yang mengatakan if, sebetulnya Thomas he is still a believer. Uh, I am of the position that I believe that Thomas is a believer. Tahu dari mana? How do I know this? Karena Thomas he still sticks with the other eleven. Because Thomas stuck with the other eleven disciples. Dia masih ada di dalam persekutuan dengan para disciples yang lain setelah Tuhan Yesus itu mati. He still in fellowship with the other eleven disciples after Jesus died. The fact dia masih ada bersama dengan para sebelas murid yang lain itu mengindikasikan he still has this kind of I don't know faith in Jesus Christ. The fact that he still with these eleven disciples says that he has faith in Jesus Christ. Jadi kebangkitan Tuhan Yesus kepada Thomas yang diperlihatkan itu truly strengthening and confirming apa yang dikatakan oleh para murid kepada Thomas. And so the resurrection of Jesus and him being evident to Thomas is an encouraging event that is in line with what the other apostles said. Thomas itu masih part of the community of Jesus. He's part of the yeah, messianic community even though 
dia ragu-ragu. Thomas is still part of the Messianic community despite his doubts. Itu lain sama sekali dengan the Jewish people yang mereka deliberately mereka tidak mau percaya. This is completely different from the Jewish people who deliberately did not want to believe in Christ. Para saudara Tuhan Yesus menawarkan apa? Just go make signs in the biggest festival of this period. What did Jesus' brothers offer? They just said, do these signs during the biggest celebration. Surah ayat ayat yang ke-6 sampai ayat yang ke-8. Look at verses 6 to 8. Apa yang dikatakan Tuhan Yesus? What did Jesus say? Dia mengatakan dua hal. He said two things. The world cannot hate you, ayat yang ke-7, but it hates me because I testify about it. That its works are evil. Ayat tujuh, dunia tidak dapat membenci kamu, tetapi ia membenci aku sebab aku bersaksi t- tentang dia bahwa pekerjaan pekerjaannya jahat. Para murid, sorry, uh, saudara Tuhan Yesus itu menyarankan hal tersebut dan Tuhan mengatakan apa? Yeah, exactly. Itu because you are from the world. That's why you think that way. The brothers and sisters say this to Jesus, and Jesus said, "Of course, you think this way. You are of the world." cara gampang untuk menarik orang ketemu dengan Tuhan Yesus. They want to use the easy way to attract people to Christ. Hal yang kedua yang Tuhan Yesus juga katakan adalah waktuku belum tiba. The second thing Jesus said is my time has not come. Waktuku belum tiba kata Tuhan Yesus. My time has not come, see Jesus. Kapan waktu Tuhan Yesus tiba? When did Jesus time come? Ada dua dua hal di sini. There are two things here. Yang pertama adalah Tuhan Yesus itu nanti dia akan pergi di tengah-tengah festival. The first day Jesus will go to the festival. Dan itu menunjukkan sekali lagi bahwa kepergian Tuhan Yesus ke sana itu is, itu adalah berdasarkan waktunya Bapaknya. It displays once again that him going there is based on the timing of the Father. Tapi ada hal yang kedua, Saudara. But secondly, brothers and sisters, waktu yang paling tepat untuk Tuhan Yesus nanti dia akan mengungkapkan dirinya kepada banyak orang supaya orang itu datang kepadanya itu akan datang di dalam penyaliban. The most appropriate time at which Jesus would reveal himself to many people was upon the cross. This is the irony of Johann in uh, uh, irony dalam pasal yang ketujuh ini. There's the irony of John chapter 7. Ayat yang ketiga sekali lagi ya. Ayat, ke, ayat, ayat ketiga sampai ayat yang keempat saya bacakan ya. This 3 and 4. Live here and go to Judea that your disciples also may see the works you are doing for no one works in secret if he seeks to be known openly if you do these things show yourself to the world Berangkatlah dari sini dan pergi ke Yudea supaya murid-muridmu juga melihat perbuatan-perbuatan yang engkau lakukan sebab tidak seorang pun berbuat sesuatu di tempat tersembunyi jika ia mau diakui di muka umum Jikalau engkau berbuat hal-hal yang demikian, tapakkanlah dirimu kepada dunia. Pada waktu para murid Tuhan Yesus mereka, uh, sorry, pada waktu saudara Tuhan Yesus mereka mengatakan, go to Judea dan make these miraculous signs. When the brothers and sisters of Jesus said, go to Judea and do these miraculous signs, Tuhan mengatakan, waktuku belum tiba. Jesus said, my time has not come. Waktuku belum tiba itu again ya, bisa bicara tentang Tuhan Yesus yang akan baru pergi ke festival itu at the middle of the festival. My time has not come. I'll be talking about Jesus going to this festival in the middle of the festival. Tapi yang kedua, But secondly, waktuku belum tiba untuk menyatakan diriku publicly itu again mengacu kepada mengacu kepada penyaliban. My time has not come to show myself publicly refused to the cross. Pada akhirnya Saudara, apa yang dikatakan oleh Saudara Saudara Tuhan Yesus itu betul-betul akan Tuhan Yesus sendiri kerjakan. Ultimately, brothers and sisters, what Jesus' siblings said, Jesus accomplished in himself. Untuk meninggikan dirinya dan menarik orang kepadanya. In order to exalt himself and draw people to him. Tapi caranya itu bukan lewat miraculous signs seperti yang orang itu pikir. But the way is not through miraculous signs like these people thought. Tapi again, melalui crucifixion. But again, through the crucifixion. Uh, saya quote ya, John 12, chapter 32. I will quote John 12 chapter 32. And I John 12:32 and I when I am lifted up from the earth I will draw all people to myself. Dan aku apabila aku ditinggikan dari bumi aku akan menarik semua orang datang kepadaku. Dan itu Tuhan Yesus bicara tentang kematiannya. And that is Jesus speaking of his death. 
So, again, bagaimana kita bisa present the true Jesus kepada orang? So, once again, how can we present the true Jesus to people? Like, kita bisa bicara tentang pekerjaan-pekerjaan ajaib yang Tuhan Yesus itu kerjakan. We can talk about the many miraculous signs Jesus did. Tapi satu hal ini tidak boleh tidak ada yaitu kita mesti present the cross of Jesus supaya orang itu ngerti who Jesus is. But the one thing that cannot be missing is the cross of Jesus. Saya mau uh, kutip satu bagian dari Perjanjian Lama, Zechariah uh, 12 chapter 10. I would like to quote a verse from the Old Testament, Zechariah chapter 12 verse 10. Ini yang dikatakan oleh Yahweh kepada orang Yahudi. This is what Yahweh says to the Jewish people. And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and pleas for mercy, so that when they look on me, on whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him, as one mourns for an only child, and weep bitterly over him, as one weeps over a firstborn. Jadi Yahweh itu mengatakan, Allah itu mengatakan bahwa mereka akan melihat aku yang mereka sudah tikam. So Christ says they will look upon me who they have crucified. Pertanyaan adalah, Bagaimana Yahweh itu ditikam oleh orang? The question is how can Jesus how can the son of God no, be no, how, how can Yahweh How can Yahweh be killed by people? Maka kita lihat penggenapan dari Zechariah chapter 12 verse 10 itu di dalam Yohanes. So we see the fulfillment of Zechariah chapter 12 in the Gospel of John. Mari kita sama-sama lihat John chapter 19 verse 37. Let's look at John chapter 19 verse 37. John chapter 19 verse 37. John chapter 19 verse 37. Ini adalah ayat yang dikutip pada waktu Tuhan Yesus itu disalibkan. These are the words of Jesus as he was crucified. And again another scripture says they will look upon him whom they have pierced. Dan Daplanas yang mengatakan mereka akan memandang kepada dia yang telah mereka tikam. The very test you saw, salah satu tes yang paling penting apakah orang itu presenting the real Jesus adalah melalui salib. One of the True test of whether someone is presenting the real Jesus is whether they talk about the cross. Karena pada waktu Tuhan Yesus disalib, dia menyatakan the true God of the Old Testament. Because when Jesus was on the cross, he was revealing himself as the true God of the Old Testament. Pada waktu Tuhan Yesus disalib, dia menyatakan dia mengaddress masalah yang paling radikal di dalam dunia itu masalah dosa. When Jesus was on the cross, he's saying that I am addressing the most radical problem in this world, that is the problem of sin. Dan pada waktu Tuhan Yesus disalib ya, dia menggenapi semua perkataan seven I am yang dia katakan in John's Gospel. And when Jesus was on the cross, he fulfilled the seven I am sayings of the Gospel of John. I am the bread of life and hear my life for you on the cross. I give my life for you on the cross. Aku adalah terang dunia. I am the light of the world. And this is where you see lights on the cross. Supaya pada waktu orang melihat salib, they know the whole reality of this world. So when people look upon the cross, they know the whole reality of this world. I am the door. Saya adalah pintu. And that door is Jesus hanging on the cross. That's the door to your fellowship with God. I am the good shepherd. Aku adalah gembala yang baik yang meletakkan nyawaku untuk domba-dombaku dan di atas kayu salib itu sang gembala dia meletakkan truli nyawanya untuk domba-dombanya. I am the good shepherd and I lay my life down for my sheep and on the cross the good shepherd truly did lay his life down for his sheep. I am the true vine. Aku adalah pokok anggur yang benar. I am the true vine. Dan di atas kayu salib maka itu adalah sumber hidup. And upon the cross there is the true life. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Semuanya dikenapi di atas kayu salib. All of these sayings were fulfilled upon the cross. Sekali lagi ya, bagaimana cara kita present the real Jesus? Once again, how do we present the real Jesus? Saudara saudara Tuhan Yesus again itu mengatakan just go to the biggest festival, lalu show yourself by making miraculous signs. The brothers of Jesus once again said to him, "Just go to the biggest festival and sh- do these miraculous signs." Yang dikerjakan Tuhan Yesus adalah He will go to one of the biggest festival, Passover. What was done by Jesus is that He would go to one of the biggest festivals, the Passover. And He will exalt Himself, dan Dia akan meninggikan dirinya sendiri. And He will exalt Himself. Di atas kayu salib. Upon the cross. Dan hanya lewat situ Dia akan tarik the true believers to Himself. 
And it is only through the cross that he will draw true believers to him. Sudah tahu Tinder? Uh, do you know Tinder? Sudah pernah, so, so, so punya Tinder gak? Do you have Tinder? <laughs> Saya pertama tahu Tinder itu dari uh, Thomas the Train. I firstly found out about Tinder from Thomas the uh, Train. Uh, Tinder and Ashes. Oh, Tinder and Ashes. Um, No, no, tapi Tinder yang saya maksud adalah Tinder app itu, uh, app, app cari jodoh. But the Tinder I'm talking about is a Tinder app for um, finding uh, your partner. Uh, saya tidak punya Tinder, definitely. I definitely don't have Tinder. Tahu dari mana nih orang soal Tinder gitu. How do you know about Tinder? Uh, saya satu kali nonton itu ya, dokumenter dari Netflix ya. Uh, I can't remember, but about Tinder something. Lah. Tinder Swindler? Tinder Swindler, yeah. yeah. I watched a documentary on Netflix called Tinder Swindler. Ya, yeah, Tinder itu salah satu aplikasi cari jodoh, saudara. So, uh, um, Tinder is a dating app. Jadi, saudara, uh, present yourself, ya, yeah, saudara promote yourself. Oh, I'm uh, whatever lah, penjual berlian dan segala macam anaknya ini dan itu. So, you promote yourself, well, I am a, a jewelry seller and the, the, these are my children's names. Um, and then, uh, satu orang lagi akan bilang, uh, it, 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 then, ya, yeah, saudara promote Tinder, saudara juga promote the, the picture, gitu, your best post. You also promote your pictures you put on your best pose. Lalu saudara sambil lihat orang lain kira-kira mereka promosi apa tentang diri mereka masing-masing. And you look at what other people are promoting about themselves. Lalu akhirnya cocok akhirnya ketemu. And if you match then you can meet up. Uh, that's Tinder sudah. Now that's Tinder brothers and sisters. Di mana orang yang sama-sama cocok ya mereka bisa transaksi itu ya hidup mereka itu lewat Tinder. Mereka We're seleksi satu-satu. Where people who um, match up, they can uh, have a transaction and share each other's lives. Um, tapi the cross of Christ, it's not like Tinder. But the cross of Christ is not like Tinder. Martin Luther, itu salah satu reformator, itu mengatakan the cross of Christ itu like the great exchange. It's the divine exchange. Martin Luther, one of the great reformers, says that the cross is the great exchange. Sudah pasti ingat Yohanes 3 ke 16 ya. I'm sure you remember John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gives his only son. Begitu besar Allah mengasihi seluruh isi dunia sehingga dia mengaruniakan anaknya yang tunggal. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So God loved the world, jadi dia memberikan anaknya kepada dunia. Because God loved the world, he gave his son. Like this is the son yang dia berikan kepada dunia. This is a son that he's giving to the world. Uh, kalau sudah punya anak, sudah akan tahu how precious a child or a son is. If you have children, you know how precious a child or a son is. Satu kali anak saya pernah uh, pipinya berdarah ya karena dicakar oleh salah satu family. Gitu. Uh, once my son had a bleeding lip because he was scratched by a family member. Lalu waktu orang tuanya tidak minta maaf gitu. Ya. And when his parent did not want to apologize, within my heart, itu ada satu keinginan yang tulus sekali, within, very sincere and genuine urge. Uh, within my heart was a very sincere and genuine urge. Uh, untuk tabokin bapaknya. And to punch his father. <laughs> Anak udah berdarah, nggak minta maaf lagi. My son is uh, bleeding, and you won't even apologize. Like, yeah. Ya satu kali anak saya itu pernah ya berapa kali minta tolong ya dia 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 jatuh dia apa terus dia bilang like, help me daddy. Uh, my son has asked for my help multiple times before when he's fallen over or had troubles. Kadang-kadang dia jatuh dari tangga waktu masih kecil. Gitu. Sometimes he fell from the stairs when he was young. Dan itu helpless ya. I, I feel like uh, helpless. Aduh juga guilty. Kenapa saya nggak bisa help him? Gitu. I felt helpless and guilty. Why can't I help my son? Tapi waktu Tuhan Yesus dia diserahkan kepada dunia, it means like God the Father itu give his son to be butchered by the world. But when Jesus was given to the world, the Father was giving his son to be butchered by the world. As if di atas kayu salib itu Yesus mengatakan like it's okay daddy. I can handle this. I can bear this. Dosa. And Jesus Christ on the cross is as if he's saying it's okay father. It's Okay, Daddy, I can handle this sin. So God gave His Son to the world. So God gave His Son to the world. Tapi kita melihat apa yang didapat Tuhan Yesus. But what did Jesus Christ gain? Kalau sudah lihat chapter 6 kemarin, if you look at chapter 6 before, Tuhan Yesus mengatakan apa? Jesus Christ said, 
Kalau orang itu tidak ditarik oleh Bapa kepadaku, dia tidak akan pernah datang kepadaku. If the Father does not draw someone to me, they will not come to me. God gave the sinners to Jesus Christ. God gave the sinners to Jesus Christ. So the cross is the anti tinder approach to the problem of the world. Salib itu anti tinder, Saudara. Salib itu bukan transaksi antara equal parties terus kemudian swap. Salib itu betul-betul satu divine exchange that only God can do. The cross is not like Tinder, brothers and sisters. It is not a fair exchange of equal partners. It is the great exchange which only God can do. Kenapa salib itu lebih penting daripada miraculous signs? Why is the cross more important than miraculous signs? Karena di, di atas kayu salib itu ada divine substitution. Because on the cross there was divine substitution. The life of Son of God for my life. The life of the Son of God for my life. Itu yang tidak bisa diberikan oleh any miraculous signs. That, that kind of substitution. That is something that cannot be given by any miraculous sign. That could not give the substitution. So, how do we present the real Christ through the cross? Melalui kasalib. Lalu yang kedua, bagaimana kita bisa present the real Christ? Itu adalah melalui again the authoritative word of God. Secondly, how can we present the real Christ? That is through the authoritative word of God. Kalau sudah lihat ayat yang ke-14 sampai ayat yang ke-24. If you look at verses 14 to 24. Pada waktu Tuhan Yesus dia sudah sampai ke dalam festival itu sesuai dengan waktu bapaknya. When Jesus had arrived to the festival according to his father's time. Maka yang dikerjakan Tuhan Yesus di sana adalah dia mengajar. Then what was done by Jesus there was that he taught. Dia mengajar sampai orang-orang Yahudi itu merasa keheranan sudah. He taught until the Jews Jews marveled. Karena apa? Karena Tuhan Yesus dia tidak punya like formal education in like a Jewish theology. Why? Because Jesus did not have any formal background in Jewish theology. Dia juga tidak hold a official position as a rabbi. He also had no official position as a rabbi. Tapi Tuhan Yesus ya, ayat ke-14 katakan apa? Pada waktu in the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and began teaching. But in verse 14, it says in the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and began teaching. Jadi Tuhan Yesus dia sengaja ambil the center dari seluruh festival. So Jesus purposefully took up the center of the festival. Festival of Tabernacles itu berlangsung sekitar 7 sampai 8 hari and Tuhan Yesus datang persis di tengah-tengah festival tersebut. The feast of the tabernacle continued for seven or eight days and Jesus purposefully came in the middle of it. Tapi juga dia purposefully dia datang in the very temple itself. But purposefully he came to the very temple itself. Dan apa yang dikerjakan di sana again ya, dia mengajar. Dia what, mengajar. What was done there? He taught. Apa yang dikatakan oleh Tuhan Yesus kita tidak dapat informasi di sini. I was said by Jesus we don't get information on that here. Tapi sudah lihat ayat yang ke-16. But if you look at verse 16. So Jesus answered them, my teaching is not mine but his who sent me. If anyone's will to will is to do God's will, he will know whether the teaching is from God or whether I'm speaking on my own authority. Jawab Yesus kepada mereka, ajaranku tidak berasal dari diriku sendiri, tetapi dari dia yang telah mengutus aku. Barang siapa mau melakukan kehendaknya, ia akan tahu entah ajaranku ini berasal dari arah Allah, entah aku berkata-kata dari diriku sendiri. Apa maksudnya, saudara? What does it mean, brothers and sisters? Sudah lihat ayat yang ke-21 sampai ayat yang ke-23. Uh, I look at verses 21 to 23. I did one work and you all marvel at it. Moses gave you circumcision and you circumcise a man on the Sabbath. If on the Sabbath a man receives circumcision so that the law of Moses may not be broken, are you angry with me? Because on the Sabbath I made a man's whole body well. So right, di dalam uh, hari itu ya ada semacam tradisi dari Jewish Mishnah. On that day there is a tradition of the Jewish Mishnah. Yang mengatakan begini. That says this. Semua pekerjaan itu dilarang pada waktu hari Sabat. All works are prohibited on the Sabbath. Kecuali apa? Kecuali sunat. Except for circumcision. Karena sunat itu punya posisi yang sangat penting sekali. Because circumcision has a very important place. Ada satu orang rabi bernama Rabbi Naftali Silver Silverberg. There is a rabbi called Naftali Silberberg. Dia mengatakan kalimat seperti ini. He said this. The covenant of circumcision symbolizes our essential bond with God. This essential bond transcends the Torah and mitzvot and their observance. 
Accordingly, circumcision doesn't supersede or complement the Shabbat. Circumcision, uh, circumcision exists on a level that transcends all the do's and don'ts of the Torah. Jadi buat orang-orang Yahudi yang namanya sunat itu melampaui sabat, so peraturan the, sabat. So for the Jewish people, the circumcision transcends the laws of the Sabbath. Sehingga pada waktu ada sabat dan orang harus disunat pada waktu hari itu itu harus dilakukan. So when there is a Sabbath, if someone needs to be circumcised on the day, it should happen. Dan Tuhan Yesus pada waktu dia mengajar dia mengatakan apa? And Christ when he is teaching, what does he say? Kalau kamu mengikuti perintah Bapa Aku, kamu akan tahu ajaranku itu betul-betul dari Bapa. If you do God's will, then you will know whether my teaching is from God. Berarti apa? What does it mean? Berarti yang namanya perintah atau per, uh, tradisi sunat pada hari Sabat itu bukan merupakan satu hal yang berasal dari Tuhan. It means that the tradition of the circumcision on the Sabbath is not from God's law. Orang sunat pada waktu hari Sabat engkau tidak marah, tapi aku menyembuhkan orang to make him whole pada hari Sabat engkau marah. When people get circumcised on the Sabbath, you are not upset, but when I make a whole person whole, you get angry at me. Kalau engkau mentaati bapakku, engkau akan sampai kepadaku. If you obey my father's will, you will arrive to me. Ini merupakan satu hal yang sangat penting untuk kita pelajari, Saudara. That is something very important for us to learn from. Ya itu apa? Bahwa seluruh kitab suci, seluruh perjanjian lama itu punya sifat kristotelik. That the whole of the scriptures, the whole of the Old Testament has a kristotelik nature. Kalau orang sungguh-sungguh mempelajari perjanjian lama, kalau orang sungguh-sungguh mau taat kepada perintah Tuhan, maka mau tidak mau mereka akan sampai kepada Tuhan Yesus. If someone truly wants to obey the Old Testament, truly wants to follow it, they will arrive at Jesus Christ. Karena semakin orang berusaha untuk mentaati Torah, maka semakin orang tahu betapa berharganya perkataan-perkataan Tuhan Yesus. Because the more someone wants to obey the Torah, the more they will recognize how precious the words of Jesus Christ are. Jadi pada waktu orang sekali lagi mentaati Torah, maka dia akan semakin mengerti betapa pentingnya perintah Tuhan Yesus. So once again, when someone obeys the Torah, they will more and more realize how precious the words of Christ are. Semakin orang tentu saja makin mengerti kalimat Tuhan Yesus, semakin orang itu juga harusnya terdorong untuk mentaati akan uh, Torah. Of course, the more someone uh, treasures the word of Jesus Christ, the more they are motivated to obey the Torah. Di dalam kehidupan Kristen ya ada dua uh, ada, ada ada satu ekstrim yang kita harus uh, perhatikan. In the life of the Christian there are two, no, two extreme actually yeah. There are two extremes that we must avoid. Yang pertama ya. The first. Orang itu taat kepada Tuhan tanpa mengerti siapakah Tuhan. There's people obeying God without knowing who he is. Yang kedua, orang itu mengerti firman Tuhan tanpa mau taat. The second is that people understand the word of God without wanting to obey it. Di dalam ayat yang ke-14 sampai ayat yang ke-24. In verses 14 to 24. Maka dua ekstrim ini, Saudara, itu diatasi melalui orang berjumpa dengan Tuhan Yesus. These two extremes are overcome by people meeting Christ. Orang makin taat, dia harusnya makin tahu kebutuhannya akan Kristus. The more people obey, the more they ought to see their need for Christ. Karena semakin dia berusaha taat, semakin dia tahu dia tidak bisa dan dia perlu juru selamat. Because the more that they try to obey, the more they realize that they can't and they need a savior. Tapi juga sebaliknya, semakin orang ngerti siapakah Kristus, harusnya itu juga mendorong orang untuk semakin taat. But on the other hand, the more someone knows Christ, the more they should be motivated to obey. Again ya kita di dalam hari ini kita sama-sama belajar ya dua hal yang kita bisa lihat bagaimana mempresentasikan akan Jesus Christ kepada orang. Again today we learn two ways in which we must present Christ to the world. Pertama adalah melalui salib. Firstly is through the cross. Yang kedua adalah melalui the teachings of Christ. Second is through the teachings of Christ. Pada waktu orang berusaha untuk makin taat kepada Tuhan, maka dia semakin mengerti kebutuhannya akan Kristus. When someone desires to obey God more, the more they will recognize their need for Christ. Semakin orang berusaha untuk 
mengerti perkataan Kristus makin dia terdorong untuk taat. The more someone knows the person of Christ, the more they will be motivated to obey. Dan salib ya, serta perkataan Kristus inilah yang akan mempresentasikan the true Jesus Christ. The Christ, the words of God, these are representation of the true Christ. Saya mau kutip terakhir ya, satu sebelum kita selesai, uh, satu perkataan dari satu orang bernama Michael Horton. Before we finish, I would like to um, quote a man named Michael Horton. Dia tanya berkat pertanyaan seperti ini. He asked this question. What would things look like if Satan really took control of a city? Apa yang akan terjadi jika setan itu menguasai satu kota? What would happen if Satan took control of a city? Dia mengatakan seperti ini kira-kira. He said this more or less. Kalau setan menguasai satu kota, if Satan took control of a city, maka semua penjara akan tutup. All the jails would close. Lalu semua pornografi itu akan hilang. Or pornography would be banished. Semua jalan-jalan akan dipenuhi dengan para orang-orang citizen yang sangat taat kepada hukum. Um, streets would be pristine and filled with tidy pedestrians who smile at each other. Anak-anak akan menghormati orang tua mereka. Children would honor their parents. Tidak akan ada yang swearing. No one would be swearing. Semua akan bi- semua akan bicara yes sir and no ma'am. Everyone will say yes sir and no and ma'am. Even And even waktu setan menguasai satu kota, maka the whole churches will be full of people every Sunday. And even if Satan took control of a city, the churches would be full every Sunday. Waktu setan menguasai satu kota, maka the whole city will be made well. When Satan is in control of a city, then the whole city would be made well. Kecuali satu hal. Except for one thing. Tidak ada salib Kristus yang diberitakan dari atas mimbar. That's it. There is no word of Christ that is preached from the pulpit. There is no cross of Christ that, is, that has been preached from the pulpit. There is no cross of Christ that is preached from the pulpit. Everything will be made well kecuali satu hal yang dia tidak akan serahkan yaitu apa? The cross of Christ. Itu tidak akan dibicarakan di dalam kota tersebut. Everything will be made well. There is only one thing he will not give up. That is the cross of Christ that will not be preached in the city. I think that's true. Hmm. Karena Karena itu benar. Karena pada waktu orang mendapatkan semuanya, tapi mereka kehilangan salib, mereka akan menemukan Kristus yang berbeda. Because if someone gains everything, but they lose the cross of Christ, they will meet with a very different Christ. Mereka akan mendengar Injil yang berbeda dan mereka akan mendengarkan Firman Tuhan yang berbeda. They will hear a different gospel and they will hear a different word of God. Biarlah kiranya renungan hari ini boleh menguatkan kita dan juga lagi boleh membuat kita semakin Ya, yeah, um, mencintai Tuhan selagi kita menyambut akan Good Friday yang akan datang. May these meditations strengthen us and grow our love for Christ as we come up to Good Friday. Mari kita sama-sama untuk kepala kita masuk dalam. Let's bow our heads and pray. Could you lead us in prayer? Um, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. Lord, thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, um, who was our Lord and our Savior. Um, help us, Lord, to always be faithful to your word, faithful to the cross of Christ and our witness to those around us. Um, help us to be um, filled with integrity um, and to not be distracted, Lord, uh, by uh, miracles and signs, but to point people to the true you. Um, Lord, fill our hearts with passion so that we would want to reach out to those around us and win them for you. And Lord, as we come up to Good Friday, may you fill our hearts even more with gratefulness with joy um, as we meditate upon your love for us. Uh, Be with us this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.